Hello CS25, this is a lecture for Unit 7, which covers Chapter 5, Part 1. In this chapter, we're going to talk about hardware and network troubleshooting. So, there are six steps in troubleshooting, no matter what type of troubleshooting you will be doing, whether it's system or networking, you will need to go through the six steps. So the first step is to identify the problem and the best way to identify the problem is to understand what it is. Um, so you want to ask the user or the client the question so that way you can understand a little bit more about the problem that the person is facing. And we want to inquire about environmental or infrastructure changes if there's something that's been modified recently. Then you should also look at the system application logs if you're able to look at the computer um, to get a little bit more understanding if there's any kind of errors or services issue. The second step in troubleshooting is establishing a theory of what could cause the problem. And this might require a little bit of research, which would be inside the system and outside the system. So we want to identify the symptoms from the prior the the prior step and be able to use the information that you obtained from the first step to be able to see what could cause the problem then the third step is to test the theory to determine the cause and if you can test to see if it is what you suspect as far as the problem um, and be able to confirm the theory. So if the theory is not confirmed, then you would go and establish another theory on what could be a probable cause. For step four, that will be establishing a plan to resolve the problem and implement the solution. So if you know how to solve the problem, then you would think about the step on how to be able to carry that out. In step five, that will be verify full functionality of the system. So let's say that if a user bring in a system that has a, a corrupted drive, then we want to find what could be the cause of that by asking the customer what happened recently. Did they download anything? Did they hear any kind of sound? Was there any kind of error seen? And so if we're able to turn on the system and check, we will be able to look at drive size, looking at the partition, looking to see if it's an active drive in your disk management. Now, if we can't turn on the computer, then what we can do is we can take a look at the physical drive or see if it's even turning on at all, whether it is an OS issue. So once I come up with different theory that could possibly be the issues with that drive, what I can do is I can establish the plan of action to solve the problem. So my theory is that that drive could be that it is malfunctioning um, and we need to replace the drive. So then we want to test it with the known good drive or we would take that drive and put it into another computer and see if it's able to use be used in another computer. If it doesn't, then we can replace the drive. Now, step four in establishing the plan for that, um, I would be able to acquire a new drive and check to make sure that it uses the appropriate interface and the cable, and then be able to establish the steps in installing OS, installing applications, and possibly looking at, you know, moving the files. If, if we're able to move the files, if not, we can try to uh, retrieve some files from cloud if the customer saved it there. Once I replace the drive, install OS, put in the application, everything is good to go. I want to test and make sure that the system has full functionality have the user check out their system, be able to test the system and run application, be able to save files, um, and so on. Then once everything went well, 
then we are going to document the findings. What, what did we discover? What kind of action did we complete in order to resolve the problem? So make sure that we know these six steps for a CompTIA A+. You will be asked some questions on troubleshooting. Now going to the assignments, the same question is asked. What are the six steps in the troubleshooting devices? So we need to note the six steps as we describe in the first page of our notes. That will be identify the problem, establish a theory of probable cause, test the theory to determine the cause, establish a plan of action to resolve the problem and implement the solution, verify full system functionality, and implement preventative measures, and then document findings, actions, and outcomes. So let's talk about some troubleshooting technique, and we're going to get in depth with in, in about the hardware devices that we're going to be looking at. So there are different components as we have covered this in the prior chapter inside your system. Now some of the causes are going to be common and some can be different. So the typical causes for the unexpected shutdown if a computer frequently shut down that could be there is a screw that fell inside the system, um, a dead short caused by loose screw, or slot covers or parts where metal parts are touching certain part of the motherboard traces or components that can cause the system to short, which makes it frequently shut down. Another a cause could be that that system is overheating fan is not cooling properly, CPU heat sink is not being able to absorb heat, um, and so when it reaches a certain temperature, it would then shut down. The third thing is power supply overheating. The power supply over time, it can be having wear and tear, and it can run very hot, and so if the fan is failing on it, likely that it would have overheating. So with these type of causes, we want to also know how we will be able to fix the problem. So in the dead short for the loose screw in the first one, we want to shut down the computer and secure all the metal components. Make sure we check all the nooks and crevices inside the system. Then if it's CPU overheating, we want to check the fan, the fan connection, the fan speed, there are software tools that we can also use to look at the temperature and the fan use. I know that if you're using your newer modern CPU, you can find software for AMD and Intel in order to manage your CPU. And for if power supply is overheating, check the power supply, check its fan. We might want to clean it. Maybe something is caught inside it, which causes it to not turning and cooling the power supply. Check the wattage of the power supply. Is it higher than the recommended? Um, is the rated unit approved to be used? Sometimes it could be a brand new power supply and if it's really high in wattage or the fan is malfunctioning, you might get a power supply overheating. So we wanna make sure that we check the physical device, the connection, and also the fan that's cooling it. Power supply failure can also cause the system to frequently reboot, and we want to test the power supply and verify that there's proper operation. Now, if you have system lockups, meaning that it's gonna halt periodically, you want to check to see if there's memory issues. So we need to shut down the system, remove and reinstall the memory possibly that you might have dust in the module or the socket of the memory and um, make sure that we also check fans and cooling vents if the problem persists that might be that the memory is overheating check specific memory and also if the memory is installed is it the correct type is it compatible with the motherboard that you're using so what we want to do is we want to check the memory and make sure that it is the correct type 
in the compatible type. If the memory has been overclocked, that means that the clock speed is increased in order to make it faster, then we want to reset the memory to factory setting. And we can use auto or SPD options in BIOS in order to do that. And we want to also add additional fans if possible to the case or near the motherboard area so that way it would be cooling the system. So sometimes when you work with the Windows PC, you might come across what's known as a power on self test. Make sure what you know that what post is. And these are the beeps that would be at the beginning when you turn on your computer. So if you have a series of beep or a very long beep, frequent beep, you might come across errors. So usually when you turn on the computer, if it beeps, it's going to be a very short beep, brief beeps. And the vendors that they all have different type of postcodes. American Megatrends, Phoenix Technologies, IBM, and so on. So if you are looking at the post error, you can also go to their website and take a look at how their beeps and what each of the beep would mean. So when you have a very long set of beeps, like 8 or 10 beeps, you might have some defective components like video adapter, for example, when you use AMI. And if you're using Phoenix um, BIOS, then you would use the beep to detect any kind of normal procedure. Now, UEFI BIOS firmware would then include um, beep links and other reporting methods that would be related to posts. So it's just a way for us to really detect issues um, as the system would generate errors or any kind of issues when it's trying to communicate with all the devices at the boot. So here gives you a table. It talks, it shows you different types of beep for different BIOS version. Um, and I also provided the link for you to take a look at the type of beeps. So when you receive a post error, those beeps can mean that you might have memory issues. Sometimes missing keyboard will cause that. Um, hard drive issues or other components that might be missing or loose that will be um, causing the problem to generate the post, which could be in the form of beeps or blinks. So when you have a blank screen, when you turn on the computer, there are a few areas that we can check. First, we can think about video configuration. Maybe the monitor is off. Maybe the video is misconfigured. Um, maybe the cable is not connected to the video adapter. So we would look at those things first. And if it's not the video adapter or the cable or the connection, we can start going into motherboard and examine the motherboard for issues. Now in the case where you have two or more inputs on the video adapter, we want to make sure that we use the appropriate cable and also configure your video adapter in the OS. But if we have a blank screen, we won't be able to configure. So make sure that we check power connection and uh, configuration for the adapter. And in the text, it talks about how you would be able to um, verify and connect the display adapter, troubleshoot the display adapter, and so on. Now, display, can we would refer to monitor. And a monitor will go bad um, when it goes through excessive use or sometimes it has manufactured issue, manufacturing issues. So on this page, page four shows you the LCD monitor and what the CFL inverter would look like. When the inverter goes bad, the monitor will not turn on. 
So what you would see is you would see that the on even on a laptop like this one, um, you would you might be able to replace the inverter, but what you can do is you can check to see if there's graphics on the screen with the flashlight, and if the if the black light has failed, then you would you would be able to see some kind of very light hint of text on the black screen um, and if you look at the screen that's still blank if you sh shine the flashlight on it if there's some text that's visible then likely that the black the backlight for the display or the monitor is bad on the led display make sure that we load the driver on the board first and so that means that we want to want to run chipset driver first and then we would run the video adapter driver. Keep in mind the LCD and LED modules for laptop or complete display are less expensive, but it needs to be attached. Um, so when you replace that, you have you might have to pop open the top of the laptop to be able to release the hinges to the actual screen itself. Then we are going to go into BIOS and time reset. So BIOS time and settings um, is depending on the battery that, that generate power to retain the information for basic input output system. Uh, now, if that battery goes bad, likely that you will have system time error or other issues. So we, want, we can replace the CMOS battery and their lifetime is usually five years or so or sometimes less if you have more frequent use of your PC. Um, we can reset the bio settings um, and then, or in the case where if we replace the battery and it doesn't resolve the problem, then the CMOS chip on the motherboard might be damaged. It's mounted and it cannot be replaced, so we have to replace the whole motherboard. Now, if we need to reset um, the BIOS, you can use the flat head screwdriver and remove the battery take it out for about a minute and then put it back in um, some motherboard would have a jumper which are two these little um, colorful either white or another color notch and it's used to be able to move between these pins so as you lift that up and move it over it's going to reset the signal so that way it will reset the bios um, but battery will not last forever and so we can replace that, that battery for a dollar or two dollars. Now if we are, are booting and we're not booting to the correct OS, the correct drive, um, or sometime if boot sequence has been changed, it's been modified, or it's booted to a device that um, doesn't have the OS, then non-bootable device is in the sequence the computer will not start so you have to remove the usb or the cd or whichever drive that you have mounted on there that doesn't have the non non-bootable partition if the system continues reboot we talked about power supply it could also be the os um, and we can take a look at how the os configuration would be. We can take a look at power settings. Is it too high or too low? Um, and then we want to also physically check to see if we have power to the motherboard um, that would allow the, the system to be running. But if the voltage is too high or too low, the processor will reset and it's going to continue to shut down as you try to reboot it. In Windows settings, you can configure the setting for dealing with stop errors and st when stop error occurs um, it usually is when the window system is reboot and it when it continues to reboot it's going to continue to generate um, the reboot until the error is resolved when we have no power we would then check power connection power button um, and then also check the power supply so what could be causing this? Power supply failure. 
if the power supply is not able to distribute power to the components that's connected inside the computer, your system will not boot. So what we can use is we can use a multimeter which tests the electrical signal of the power supply. So you would then shut down the computer, take out the power supply and be able to use it for testing. When there is incorrect panel wiring for your USB power button and so on, so if you press the power button and it doesn't turn on, possibly that that power button is disconnected from the motherboard or the header, um, the, the, the header cable. So we want to make sure that we check those things. Um, now losing or missing power leads to the power supply, uh, this, so, we should always use search protector. We should always use things that suppress power and regulate the power that's used on that goes into our system. So having a, also a backup power unit is going to allow us to be able to maintain the operation of the system in case something happens. Overheating that could possibly be caused by power supply overheating or the fan failure or overloading the system where we can crank up and make sure that the processor is running high all the time that will cause a lot of heat inadequate airflow outside of the system and inside the system so make sure that we clean that and you can simply clean it with compressed can air if you don't have that um, you can use like a hair dryer that's cool, turn on the cool mode take it outside um, Air pressure, you know, spray would probably be okay, but just be careful that you don't loosen up the device when you do that. When we overload, there's a lot of power that needs to be distributed for the overloading of the processes. So we can consider um, if, if we overload the power supply, it's going to be very hot. It can cause the devices to draw more power and it also um, can cause the system to frequently shut, shut down or reboot. So we can consider using or upgrading the hard drive and add the card-based type of devices um, to the system to reduce the overload of the power supply. When we have fan failure, that's when we're going to lose a lot of the cooling um, so it, the, the fan, the case fan brings in the cold air to the board or the heat sink, and then it's going to be able to, to dissipate the, the cooling, uh, the air there inside the system. So here in the case of the fan fail, it would stop to determine if it's failed. You can listen to it to see if there's a, a, a simple hum noise for the fan. And if the blades is not turning or it's doing very slow, that means that it's, it's failing and it's not able to operate with the dust that's in there. So we want to clean our system. And overall, if you have inadequate airflow inside into the system and going from inside the system out, um, likely that your system will be running hot. It would cause a lot of wear and tear over time. So we want to make it a practice where we would regularly clean our system, not every day, but every so often, so you can do it a few times a year. Especially if we have pets or it's in the dusty area. Now, when we look at improving the airflow, we want to look at ways to tie up the cable so it doesn't block airflow to the components. We want to replace missing slot covers on the case um, because the case is designed to regulate air. And we also want to make sure that the case fans and the CPU fans are working correctly. Dirt and dust. So we talked about cleaning the system. We want to make sure that the system is um, have a lot of airflow. And if you hear a loud noise, whether it's screeching, um, rattling, thumping, um, if the fan is built into the component of the heat sink, 
and if it's failing and so on. So if we wanted to be able to detect strange noise or loud noise that's coming from the system, that will tell us that that system needs attention and the hardware likely is needing the attention. So in our assignment, we can answer the next few questions. Number two, how do you troubleshoot power supply failure? You want to test the power supply with the known go one and verify the proper operation. So you can take the power supply and put it into another system to see if it's causing the same thing, or you can you can take a good power supply and put it into the system that you're working on um, and see if it's behaving normal. If it is, then that means that the old power supply is going. It's bad. So for three, it asks you what is the common cause for the system lockups that will be corrupt corruption of memory content. Number four, what should you do when you hear con continuous high frequency beep? We want to just check motherboard and processor because that's when we receive the post and we and the system is telling us that something is wrong with either things on the motherboard or the motherboard itself and also the processor. Number five, Tom asked you to fix his computer that has a blank screen and it turns on. How do you assist Tom troubleshoot? his computer we want to check the power connection and power button we want to verify that the data cable is securely connected so that way data can be transferred we are going to disable any kind of onboard video that tom has um, if he does have an additional adapter and we want to connect the video adapter um, to the appropriate cable for your monitor now uh, use the input button to change the video input options on the monitor itself. Use a flashlight to check if there's any visible text or image to determine if there's an inverter or a backlight issue. And um, we want to use a known good device or another video adapter or monitor to test that. But if you don't have that, um, then you need to narrow down every issue one thing at a time. But we should always testing with the known good device. You're given an old computer when it is turned on, you notice that the clock shows incorrect time. What is likely the cause of this problem and how do you fix it? So we want to look at the theory that would be CMOS battery is going bad or it could be malfunctioning CMOS chip. We can replace the CMOS battery and see and test the functionality of the system again. If the problem persists, we would check them for motherboard replacement. For question seven, it asks you a client asks you to fix a computer which has continuous reboot problem. What is typically the source of the problem? How do you troubleshoot this issue? So we want to take a look at power supply and power supply is usually the cause of continuous reboot. It could be that the power supply is going bad, it's overheating, or it's not distributing the, the appropriate power to the system. We can test the power supply with the multimeter or for volt range. It needs to have the appropriate volt range and we want to, and you can find that information on the internet if you Look at the sticker of the power supply it will tell you who's the manufacturer and what is the rate of wattage use the known good power supply to verify the good source of the problem and so if we if that's the issue and we can come up with a solution that we replace the power supply we simply remove the power supply put it in put in the new power supply we want to turn on the system and verify that it's working and we can document after that Question A asks you, Larry's computer does not turn on. What could be the common causes? So that if it doesn't turn on, there could be a few things that could be could be wrong. So the theory could be a bad power supply, or it could be a loose power cable connection, or the power is simply just not plugged into 
a surge protector that's plugged into the socket. Um, power buttons are not pressed on the case or bad power connection or surge protector or the power source. And also incorrect or missing front panel connection, the power button is not properly connected. So those are some of the issues that we can look at um, before we narrow down possible costs and then we want to go through and troubleshoot by providing the solutions. In question nine, it asks you what are the common causes of overheating on the computer that will be overloading, fan failure, inadequate airflow from outside of the system into the system, inadequate airflow inside of the system going out, um, also debris, dirt, or dust can also cause the cause overheating as it's not able to cool properly. For question 10, it asks you, how can you improve airflow inside your computer? Um, you can use cable ties to make sure that excess cable is not preventing uh, preventing or catching the fan, preventing airflow inside your system. We can replace a missing slot cover from the back of our case to make sure that the airflow is properly circulated. Um, we want to make sure that case fans and CPU fans are working correctly. Question 11, it asks you, how should you remove dust or dirt from inside of your computer case? We can use a small vacuum cleaner, but we want to be careful when we do that. We don't want to vacuum in out some of the small components that might be loose. We can also use canned air or compressed air. You can get compressed air from the compressor uh, machine or you can buy a canned air. Just make sure that we hold it appropriately. Next, we are going to visit the areas of your cables and um, some of the additional components that we can troubleshoot. So the next item um, is the intermittent intermittent uh, device failure. And so when you have devices that have low power draws, such as mice and keyboard, um, that can be an early sign of overloading the power supply. So we want to replace the power supply with something that's a little bit higher rated in the wattage. And intermittent failures of other USB external devices can also uh, be caused by damaged cable, power supplies, connectors, or ports. So the ports itself can be damaged if it's rusted or um, there's pin broken stuck inside it and so on could be an, an issue. So how do we troubleshoot? We want to shut down the computer. Um, we want to replace the data cable of the with the known, we want to test it with the known good data cable such as USB, um, so we can plug that in and see if it's working. If the problem persists, we can turn off the, keep the system off, and then we want to go through to the next theory and be able to, to fix the, the system. But if we replace the cable and if everything is good, we can turn it on. We want to be able to test to see if it's properly working, and then um, we would be able to document after that. If the fan is spinning, but there is no power to other devices, then that means that um, the fan is connected to the power supply properly, but you might have issues. So you want to check to see if the main power connection to the motherboard is, um, in, is connected fully and appropriately and there's proper pin lineup for the EPS. Make sure that also your CPU and memory modules are securely installed. It could be that it's loose or it's not completely connected um, or installed properly. If we see indicator light in the front of the system um, displaying the power and the hacked hard drive activity, if that light go out um, but the system is functioning properly, that means that the motherboard connection to the indicator light with the header cable is bad 
or loose. If we smell smoke or burning smell or any kind of odor that could possibly be from overheating power supply, from vent, um, things like that. So we want to shut down the system and make sure that we remove the power supply um, before other things happen. And smoke and burning smell can also be caused by failing capacitors. And failing capacitors are these little cylinder on the motherboard. Um, and it's used to re retain a small amount of power. So that way it could be distributed throughout the board. So if the capacitor fails, um, it would cause like a burning smell. And you can actually replace the component, um, but most often that people would replace the motherboard itself so on page 10 it gives you the step-by-step -step troubleshooting um, technique on how to you know check for the power supply smell um, and then check for the ac power disconnect the cord check for a voltage switch and so on so we want to verify the physical areas and things like that for our power supply before we go into BIOS and also look at the configuration of how it in power supply is used. Now we can also check for loose screws. We can use a multimeter. We can use a known good device. We can check for power connection to the system, to the adapter and so on. Um, Distended capacitor, these are called ca caps, and sometimes that they can be distended or and leak, which causes some failure over time. So in that case, we would have to replace them and damage motherboard. And here shows you what a leaking capacitor looks like. It will have like a brown rusty residue on top or sometime on the side of it. So that's what you would see. If we get a crash screen like blue screen of death, so that means that we could be facing issues with, with things that are being halted or memory that is used, um, that was using and needs to be stopped possibly for the application. So in this case, we have to shut the computer off and then turn it back on. Um, and we want to write down the code that's given to us there to be able to see what the problem would be. So that will require some research. The cause of for blue screen of death, incompatible or defective hardware and soft and or software. We can check the system by going into safe mode and making sure that um, you know we're not utilizing this a lot of resources in safe mode so we can check. You can run um, you can run SFC and be able to, to check for the system, the system file. And also we can also look at Windows registry um, for the keys in, in, in the registry and making sure that system restore it can be used to revert back to the state. Or it could be virus. And so we can scan for malware and we can check for um, you know, event viewer for the system and the syslog. So on the next part, it talks about possible solutions and how to go about fixing the problem with blue screen of death. Um, sometime upgrading application will help or replacing the components such as memory. Sometimes memory goes bad, it would cause that as well downloading and updating the operating system is also important in mac os um, you would see pinwheel that just shows that it is it might be lacking in ram or storage space or a damaged application so in mac os they call that beach wheel of death instead of blue screen of death so in the next part it talks about how you can go about troubleshooting a Mac OS system. And then we always want to use log entry um, and error messages to really see what is wrong with our computer.
the recommended tools that you can use for a diagnosis to fix motherboard RAM, CPU power, and other components. We should have a multimeter to look at volt range for um, your power supply. We can also acquire a power supply tester. We can use a loopback plugs for the network to see if we have a loopback um, signal. And we can also purchase a device called postcard, um, which can in the form of USB. And we want to also carry well uh, known good cables. And so that way we can test the system. So in the next part, it talks about what a multimeter looks like, um, what it does, how you can use it. And then for the voltage, looking at resistance and how we would be able to rate each of the volt and what would be the acceptable volt range right here. A power supply tester would look something like that. It would have a power connect connector, and then it would have a little, um, it looks like a, a, a bag or a box-like attachment. So here, if we plug in the tester, and we wanted to plug into the 20 or 40 pin of the motherboard, and if the power supply starts, if it's working, then the, it will turn on green. If it doesn't turn on green, then it shows that it's not working. So not a good power supply there if it doesn't turn green. So that gives you the overview of how you can use some of the testers and the components. And here's a picture for that. Um, in the next few questions, number 12, John uses a USB port on the PC to change his Android smartphone. To charge his Android smartphone, he noticed that the smartphone does not get charged in various time. What is the cause of this problem? How should John fix the problem? So the cause could be that it is he has a bad USB cable. We can test it with a known good cable. Um, or if if John has insufficient power supply unit in the computer that he used to charge his smart device um, and that would draw the power and that can cause the issue so we want to replace it with a higher rated um, wattage PSU or it could be a bad port on the motherboard we want to test the connection with another good device and if that doesn't go through, then we know that our motherboard is going bad. And so we can replace the motherboard. For question 13, it asks you, when Jacqueline turns on her computer, she knows the strong burning smell coming from the inside of her computer. What could be the cause? And what is your advice for fixing this problem? Burnt, possibly that it could, she's facing burnt power supply. We can replace the power supply with the equivalent or a slightly higher wattage. Um, Sometimes that could be a bad capacity on the motherboard. So the capacitor, we can replace the capacitor on the motherboard. We can check for residue as well. 14, what should you do when you encounter the blue screen of death? You should record the error. You should restart the system, research the error for repair. And it could be various things like applications, OS, and so on. For 15, what are the causes of blue screen of death? Incompatible or defective hardware or software. It could be having registry problems or malware viruses. For question 16, what are the causes of pinwheel of death in macOS? Lack of RAM. Lack of free space on storage for swap drives that will be on hard drive or SSD. Um, and then damage application. Those are possible causes. For 17, what additional tools should you add to the basic computer repair toolkit in order to troubleshoot CPU, RAM, and power? We should have 
our normal toolkit along with multimeter, power supply tester, loopback plugs, post, card, USB. And I would bring add in some cables there. Okay, so this concludes my vi lecture video for Unit 7 in CIS 25. Thank you for watching the video.